Glenn. I'm a member of the congregation of RPAC and it's my privilege to be here with you this morning coming from the Catherine living room right here in Hurstville. We're into week two of our series, Prayer for Every Season. And Jared, our senior minister, will be coming up shortly to speak to us from Psalm 139. Now, lockdown is tough, but we have a great God and he is in control of all things. Now, if you're finding things tough and you need help in any way, please contact us. Please contact us via our website. Now, Dan and Scott have been doing great jobs with the graphics coming up on the screen, if you've seen previous weeks. So I'm just gonna give it a go now so we can bring up the graphic of the website. So bringing up our graphic, there's the website there for RPAC. rpac.org.au. If you need any help at all, please contact us. We're here, we want to serve you and show you the love of Jesus. So please contact us if there's anything you need. Do you remember our booklet, 10 Bible verses that you have in your back pocket? Well, I think it's time to have a look up the Bible verse on perseverance. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because... 
Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. It comes from James 1, 12. Fantastic booklet. If you'd like one of these booklets, I'm sure you can contact us via the website and we'd be able to send one out to you for free. So we bring that graphic up again. There it is. There's the website. Please contact us. We'd love to send you a booklet out. So I'm sure Jared's ready for us now. So I'm going to pray. Please pray with me. Our gracious God, as we turn to your word for these minutes, we ask that what we know not, you would teach us. What we have not, you would give us. What we are not, you would make us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church Online here at RPAC. We've gone from the cafe and living room to the Booker dining room. My name's Jared. I'm the senior pastor at RPAC, and it's great to have you join us. I hope you're persevering and keeping perspective in these times. We just had the news this week from our Premier that unfortunately we're going to be in, an, in further lockdown for at least a month. Hopefully we're buoyed by some of the positive things, but I really hope you're keeping perspective and persevering. Uh, what are those things that are helping you at the moment? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, what's helping you persevere and keep perspective? Um, uh, is it the Olympics? Hasn't it been great watching some of the Olympic events coming out of Tokyo? Um, it's a great time being able to cheer on our, our athletes and see other countries do so well. I'm really, really loving seeing Japan do so well, actually, hosting the Olympics there uh, amidst, amidst, uh, amidst um, difficult uh, way to host it. Uh, what, what are some of the other things that you're um, finding helpful to persevere and, and keep perspective in, this, in these times? Are you getting out for some daily exercise? Um, maybe you're finding some help uh, cooking, reading, listening to music. Uh, I'd love to hear. Um, ultimately, though, I hope that you're really persevering and keeping a perspective as you draw closer to God. I hope that in your prayer life and in your Bible reading and um, at times like this, as we gather, even though it is online, it's not the same as being in person. I hope that um, this morning will help you persevere and keep perspective um, as to what's going on and, and who God is. That's our hope during this series, online series in Psalms. Very soon I'll be reading Psalm 139. So if you've got your Bibles at home, um, grab them. Because as I said last week, it, it's great to look at and ponder uh, the Psalms. And I hope that you're doing that during the week too. I hope that your, your reading of the Psalms is helping you persevere and keep perspective in these times. Or maybe you've got um, uh, the uh, Bible studies, the prayer growth group studies for this term on the email. Uh, hopefully you're finding them helpful. Um, please let me know if you didn't get a copy of them and you'd like uh, one, uh, let me know. Um, we had that terrific graphic from Glenn. Um, so don't forget that website. That, that was amazing. It was an rpac.org.au. Uh, that's how you can connect um, if you're just online with us at church. But our church members know the other, other ways to connect. Um, you got my phone number. Let me know. Send me a message. Give me a call. So we're persevering and we're keeping perspective in these times because that's what we need. And as God's people, we dig deep into his word and that's why we've got this psalm series in the Psalms at the moment. And in a minute, I'll read Psalm 139. But before I do, let me pray. Dear God and Father, we do thank you that you're a good God. You're a God who loves us. You are a God who is powerful and awesome and and sovereign, Lord, you are you are sovereign over this pandemic, as you are over each of our lives. We commit ourselves to you in these changing and uncertain times. And now, as we read and ponder Psalm one three nine, open our hearts and our minds to your wonderful truth. Let us look on you and your Son Jesus with awe and thankfulness. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let me read Psalm one thirty nine. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. 
You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I, make, if I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, when I am awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You know, in our history, there have been some famous people that early on in their work or their performance life, they were underestimated, famously underestimated. Thomas Edison was one. He was underestimated for his work. Even Walt Disney, even that the amazing band, the Beatles, they were underestimated early on. Vincent van Gogh, even, during his life, was, was underestimated. You know, it's one thing to underestimate people. It's a whole other thing when we underestimate God. We want to make sure that we don't underestimate the wonder of God, the Lordship of God, and his power. Because in Psalms like Psalm 139, we see so much of that. God's power, God's lordship, his wonder is on display. We don't want to underestimate this kind of God that we just read about in Psalm 139. So it's a good question for us to ask ourselves, how big is our God? How big is your God? Is it possible that we've underestimated God. Is it possible that at times like the times we're going through now in a pandemic, is it possible that now that we're underestimating God and what he can do and who he is? Well, to avoid underestimating God, we need to come to understand his lordship, his wonder and his power more deeply. And this is where Psalm 139 will help us. So how big is our God? First question I want to ask is, is he all-knowing? Have a look at verses 1 to 6. Because what it um, talks about there in verses 1 to 6 is God's omniscience. That is God's all-knowingness. We are known, verse 1, David cries out to God, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. The psalmist, Psalm David, says that his thoughts and his movements are known by God. Have a look at verse 2. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. His thoughts and his movements are known by God. 
Our ways are known by God. Listen to David, Psalm 3. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Our ways are known by God. And our words and our minds are known by God. Have a look at verse 4. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. And he surrounds us and he watches over us. That's what David says in verse 5. You hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. How big is our God? Secondly, is he everywhere? Have a look at verses 7 to 12 because this talks about God's omnipresence. That God is everywhere. We cannot hide from God's sovereignty. That's what David is saying in verses 7 to 8. Have a look at them. When I go from your, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? David knows that he can't flee from God. He can't hide from God because God is everywhere. And we are guided and we are held fast no matter what. That's what David's saying in verses 9 and 10. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. We're guided and held fast no matter what. And you notice too, David says of God that he brings light where there is darkness. He says that in verses 11 and 12. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. God is everywhere, David has realised. How big is our God? Thirdly, is he all-powerful? Have a look at verses 13 to 18. Because here... David is talking about God's omnipotence, his power. He is sovereign over creation. The way David describes it here, he is sovereign over David himself. He is sovereign over you and me. Look at verse 13. David says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. He is sovereign over us. David says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In verses 14, I am not hidden. I was woven together. David describes in verse 15. He also describes God as being sovereign over his days. He says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days adorned for, ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. He is sovereign over our days. How big is our God? The fourth question to ask, does he reign? Does he reign over us? Because the God of the Bible has been described here and in other places as reigning supreme. And what David has come to realise in Psalm 139 is that he needs to let God reign supreme over his life. He knows that that is the best way. Because we too need to be able to say in a time like this, during this pandemic, through the, through the ups and the downs of life, we need to be able to say, like David, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You see, if we believe God reigns supreme, we can believe he will answer us, answer us when we ask this of him. When we believe God reigns supreme, we believe he reigns supreme over our lives, over pandemics, over our nation, over our world at the moment. You see, it's about letting God reign supreme in our lives. Search me, God. Know me. Test me. See if there is any offensive way in me. And in times of uncertainty and unknown, when we desire to keep perspective and desire to persevere, we ought to ask God these questions even more so. 
and because we know we need help and to lead us in the everlasting way, to lead us in the way everlasting, even when we might be unsure of the way ourselves, God reigns. He knows the way and, and we submit ourselves to his way. Let me finish by talking about this. How will we show that God is sovereign over our lives, even through a pandemic, even through a pandemic, even through times like this? Firstly, I want to say, um, we'll need to submit our lives to him. Our past, our present, our future. We can take comfort and have peace that it's going to be okay. How come? Because of what we know of God. That God reigns supreme. God is Lord over creation, over us, over everything. He's everywhere. We don't need to worry or fret. We don't need to lose our cool. Instead, we need to remind ourselves of how good God is. God is sovereign over our past. He is sovereign over our pain. He is sovereign over our loss. He's even sovereign over our sickness. He's sovereign over the good and bad. And he is sovereign over this pandemic. You remember the words of the Apostle Paul to the Christians in Rome. This comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. But that famous verse doesn't end there. Have a listen to what else Paul said, following verse 29, following um, verse 28, Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For those God foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. For those he foreknew, those he predestined, you see, he is conforming you and I to the likeness of Jesus through all of this. Now it's hard, isn't it? You know what it's like to live through a pandemic Many of us live through hard times. It's hard. But remember that you and I, we're being conformed to the likeness of Jesus through this. Isn't that incredible? I want to assure you this morning that if you are called, then you are justified and you are glorified. And to you, Christian... You are being conformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ through times like this. Second thing I want to remind us of in times like this is to let God guide us and hold us fast. Let God guide you and let him hold you fast through this time. Let God bring light into the darkness for you. You're experiencing the darkness at the moment. Well, hand that over to God and let God bring the light into the darkness for you. We get an opportunity to tell others of the light, you know. I hope you're making the most of those opportunities if they're there. Because we want to see others that are experiencing darkness at the moment, experiencing the hard times through this pandemic, to know the light that our sovereign creator can provide for them. So we let them know. Thirdly and finally, let me finish with this point. Will you let God reign? I hope you will over this time. I hope you will over the whole of your life. Ask God to search you. Ask God to know you and make you aware of anything in your life that you might need to change. Then be ready to let him to do his transforming work in you, which he does. But let me tell you, it won't be easy because God's sanctifying work in us never is. Are there any parts of your life that you haven't handed over to God yet? Any parts of your life where you're being stubborn or hard-hearted? Are you letting God show you where you need to grow, how you need to trust him? Any parts of your life that you haven't handed over to him yet? We'll do that. 
Do that to, to this sovereign God who is loving and supreme and who loves you. And ask God that he will lead you in the way everlasting. That's my prayer for you. I hope that's your prayer for me. Let me pray for us all now. Father God, we do want to thank you that you reign supreme over our lives. You reign supreme over this pandemic, over our nation and over the world at the moment. We thank you that you have made yourself known to us, that you know us so deeply. You know our hearts. You formed us in our mother's wombs. You knit us together. There is no one who knows us better. And so, Father, we submit ourselves to you, our hearts and our minds. We hand over the darkness to you. We ask you to replace it with light. Lord, remind us if there are any offensive ways in us. Keep transforming us to be more like Jesus and conforming us to his image and his likeness. And in his wonderful name we pray. Amen. Thanks for being with us this morning. Don't forget uh, to reach out uh, to me or to our church in all those normal ways. But don't forget our website, rpac.org.au. Stay in touch, everyone. God bless.
podcast outfits, no other name but Jesus, Jesus, my hope in darkest nights, my broken soul's delight, no other name but Jesus, Jesus. As our time together comes to a close, I'm going to pray. Um, I was taught this prayer. It comes straight from Psalms, uh, Psalm 143, by a minister from Lagano, Don Howard, when I and Leslie attended there oh, over 20 years ago. And Don got me by the ear and he said, listen here, young Glenn, no prayer, no breakfast. And this is the prayer that he taught me. And I've been saying this prayer every day for over 20 years. So it's Psalm 143, and it starts at verse 8. Let me pray. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord, for I hide myself in you. Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your namesake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies. Destroy all my foes. For I am your servant. Amen. I hope that's your prayer too. Please join us for a Zoom call, Zoom morning tea. It's happening straight after the service here. So please, you can get back online. We've got morning tea coming up. I've got morning tea of champions here. Chocolate Scotch Finger Biscuits, washing it down with a beautiful Coke Zero. Not quite a foley morning tea, but anyway, I'll be enjoying it as I'm on the Zoom call. So please come on the Zoom call for morning tea and some fellowship. Please join us next week as we continue our series and please keep safe.